Good morning, Zampak. Good morning, Zampak, and welcome to another episode of GMZ. This week, um, we oh, have... That? This! This! This week, we have a bit of a special episode. Um, yes. So we are taking a break from a zombie ate my panties, which is the the zombie porno we've been reading um, mm-hmm. because we have a very special guest which seems quite a, kind of out of kilter with our, our recent <laughs> our re- of, yeah. of, of reading zombie porn but the, you know the, 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 it's it's still within the same genre so um, yeah it's we have a really big star guest we do, we do, uh, so this week we have an incredible star guest like my hands are sweaty incredible uh he's come along to have a casual chat and tell zombie fans a little bit about future projects that he has coming up yeah so uh this week we have george cameron romero um who's coming on to talk about his projects um so cameron romero is going to be on this week Uh, we're going to do an interview with him um and we're going to just sort of blab on and play silly buggers and we're just going to you know do 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 you know the usual stuff that we do on our podcast but we have a mega star guest for a change so that's going to be cool So hi Cameron, welcome to our podcast. Hello, how are you? Oh, great, thanks. Good, thank you for having me. That's no problem at all. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for being a guest on the podcast. It, it, it means so much to us. We've, we've been very nervous about this all week. Um, our listeners are all fans of, of your late father's work, really. And before we start the interview, I just wanted to express our condolences to you and your family on behalf of everyone at GMC. Oh, I appreciate that very much. It was, uh, it was a rough time. But... Yeah. Well, here we are. I can and definitely imagine. Is. And, um, you know, I mean, how many people can say that their father left behind what he left behind? You know exactly. What I, mean? like, <laughs> I, feel, I feel like the luckiest kid in the world. <laughs> you do, bless you. <laughs> I, so, everywhere I go, like literally everywhere I go, there's a reminder of him. You know? Oh, really? And it's nice. It's kind of it's like he's still he's around. He's still here. Definitely. So, I mean, you're in the movie industry yourself, and you've you've produced, directed, wrote, acted in lots and lots of films. Um, did you deliberately follow in your dad's footsteps, or did he kind of like encourage you into the industry? How did it come about? Uh, no, I think if anything, he probably tried to discourage me. Uh, <laughs> right. you know, as, as I think is uh, is is a pretty common story among uh, offspring of folks in this business, um, at least back then, anyway. Uh, you know, I think it was just, you know, my mom was a, a vice president of an advertising firm in the fifties, um, which was a tough thing for her to do, but she was a, a creative in the ad world. Um, yeah. and then my dad is my dad. And, you know, I think, I, I, I think genes conspired to make me a creative lifer, if you will. Um, and, uh, you know, I couldn't draw. My mom told me when I was young, there's only a few ways you're going <laughs> to there's only a few ways you're going to see the world. One is with a, you know, a camera in your hand. The other is with a gun in your hand, Hmm. you know, since, uh, since uh, the military didn't really take me, they found my asthma when I was young. Uh, but you know, by then I'd already, I'd already been making backyard movies and everything since I was about eight years old. So I think it was just one of those things that, you know, um, my life as a kid kind of just pushed me toward needing uh, a creative outlet more than anything. And, and then as I found that and pursued it, uh, I decided, you know, pretty young that I was going to dedicate sort of my life to pursuing, you know, what it truly meant to be a, an actual creative, which turned out to be, you know, quite the gift and the curse at the same time. I think. So, so have you ever done like a, a regular job? I say I'll put regular in inverted <laughs> commas. Um, or have, have you always just done being in the film business? Have you ever done anything, yeah, anything absolutely. other than this? Yeah, yeah, I've done just about. If you could, uh, if you can name a shitty job on the planet of a job, <laughs> I may have done it. So, <laughs> um, you know, uh, every uh, anything and everything that I could do to make money when I was young. You know, my parents split when I was young, and uh, my mom had primary custody of me. So uh, she was born in the in the during the depression, and uh, and and raised me, you know, very much with that sort of mindset. So by the time I was you know, just turning into a teenager, I was already working jobs and doing yeah. everything I could do. You know, basically it was all just, it was like a habit, right? It was like to support a bad habit. 
you know, I needed to do whatever I could do to support this bad habit of needing this creative outlet, you know. Um, and it's one of those things where, you know, um, like Orson Welles said, you know, a writer needs a pen, an artist needs a brush, but a filmmaker needs an army, you know. I mean, it's tough to it's tough to go out there with a, you can't go out with a four track and record a song and you can't go out with a canvas and paint something. You need people to help and to Yeah, collaborate. it's an expensive business. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, so I, I had to, even at a very young age, if I wanted to develop my little eight millimeter reels, I had to go mow lawns and all that stuff. So mm. that was when I was a little kid and then it just went on from there, you know, and I, literally I've probably done any crappy job you can think of. So. I guess that's the shortest answer to your question. <laughs> kind of went around the block. That's fine. That's, that's, that's amazing. I mean, it's very, you carry on. very often you sort of, um, because of your surname, people, uh, I guess, kind of make assumptions over over you and, and how you got into the business and your sort of creative drive and will, as it were, um, but don't really know the full story of you and your mum. And obviously your mum being a very tough industry um, in, in a time that was very tough to be a woman in that industry. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I guess it's nice to talk about because people make assumptions, don't they, because of your surname? Yes, yes, there are a lot of assumptions out there. Yeah, I can. Uh, based on that, but, you know, it's it's something that you learn to live with and work with. And so, you know, uh, I I learned at a very young age. You know, it might be a it might be a surname that gets you in a door, but it's 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 the person you are once you're inside the door that keeps you in the room. Yes. And uh, you know, I try to live my life like that. Hmm. Um, we That's did, a good way of looking at it, I think. Yeah, we like that. We did um, we did a tribute episode to your dad last year, where we had a bunch of um, of Romero fans, basically, and and zombie film fans, and they come onto our podcast to talk about their feelings um, and to talk about the effect that those films had on them and how those movies changed their lives. Um, and it was a really emotional episode. It was a really tough episode, actually. I really struggled to do it. I think um, Rebecca was ill, wasn't you? You, you missed it. I was. Um, and I, I, was I Ill. And I read out a message from you that was so emotionally charged, and it, it you know it was it was a tough episode. Um, and but the, there was one fact that just kept coming back and back and back and back, and that, that everybody wrote in or everybody come on the podcast and spoke to us said that they saw their first uh, zombie movie or Romero movie or horror movie around about the age of twelve or thirteen when they really shouldn't have, um, and it, and it mm-hmm. had a, a, a profound effect on the life. Um, so my my question to you is: did, did your dad's films have that same effect on you at a young age, or did you become sort of accustomed to them? Um, and, and when did you watch your first? horror movie yourself well you know i think depending on how young you are when you see any of his original work i think that um it definitely has an effect on you and i think that uh that effect for a lot of people in 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 my generation you know back then our parents viewed that effect as a negative thing Mm -hmm. um and (laughs) you know i mean and i actually just had this conversation with a friend the other day and you know i think part of the reason um that Young, younger kids today don't resonate with horror some of the same way we did, in my opinion, is because part of what was so appealing about it was we weren't allowed to watch it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was the I mean, as a generation, yeah. like, yeah, it was something that, you know, I mean, I, I can't tell you how many people I speak to about the first time they saw his stuff. And, you know, I can't out of those people, what a good 70, 75 percent of them. I'll say something like, you know, like, well, I snuck out and watched it or yes. nobody was home and it was on the midnight movie and I snuck into the room and watched it when I wasn't allowed to. Mm. And that's all part of what heightened us as kids to watch this stuff. Mm. And then we don't really live in a world like that too much anymore. You know, yeah. I mean, no, everything's um, readily accessible, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. You know, and I think that it's tough to nowadays to try to figure out how to affect an audience the way this stuff did, because back then, I mean, because we weren't allowed to watch it, it was it was hard to find, mm-hmm. and it was really rare. I was lucky in that I had access to, um, you know, if I didn't have access to copies of strange, you know, Italian horror movies, uh, I had access to conversations in which I could have my little notebook that I would sketch and doodle in. But in reality, I was just writing down movie titles that I would overhear, and then go down, you know, hop on the the bus to downtown Pittsburgh, which I wasn't allowed to do, and go to my favorite weird video store, which I wasn't allowed to go to, and pick out <laughs> movies that I wasn't allowed to watch. Oh, so you did it too. That's brilliant. That's, I mean, that's what I wanted to hear. You did it too. It's um, so yeah. Everybody did it. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I mean, I think I saw Night, I think it was about eight the first time I saw Night, and it, it oh, you know, 
yeah and i think my mom you know caught me watching it and was like you know at first was like angry and then said well i guess you should probably know what your dad does mm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> It's for real for a living. Mm. And, uh, and you know, by, so, you know, at first I was kind of horrified. And then uh, about, I don't know, the halfway point, I was just, it was like a, a, I don't even know how to describe it. It was just, I was loving it. I was laughing and just in, in love with what I was watching. And ever since then, it's just been in my DNA, I guess, hmm. uh, you know, literally and figuratively <laughs> yeah yeah well, I I fair, watching dawn of the dead at the age of 10 has not done me any harm you know i'm now obsessed with zombies and do a podcast every week so yeah exactly <laughs> I mean, you know, and there's so many like some of the best friends in my entire life i met because they were fans of my dad's you know and and you know and a lot of my fans maybe found me because of my dad and you know, that was something that took a bit of getting used to. But then once again, it's like I said before, you know, it might be some one thing that opens a door, but it's the person you are once you're in the room. And, you know, even fans of mine that have found me by way of my dad, I've, I've managed to keep on my own merits. And, and you know, that's something I'm, I am proud of, you know, and I, I love every single person who takes the time to, you know, acknowledge anything I've ever done, both good or bad. You know, I mean, yeah. a lot of people try to troll me on the Internet and talk, you know, and talk shit on my stuff and and you know and they expect some response and my response is usually like well look i appreciate your opinion you know i look not everybody's gonna like everything everybody makes and you know there are enough people that do like what i do and 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 that's what matters to me but it's more important to me to also understand that that a lot of people might not like what i do just like a lot of people didn't like what my dad did when when night came out uh you know people called him you know uncontrollable they called him like this these horrible names and said he had to be stopped mm. the filmmakers couldn't be allowed to live like that or, or or put that stuff in the world and he had to be stopped and you know and that's why I, I my my whole motto in life for my company is films used to be dangerous when my dad was making movies films were dangerous they, you yeah. know he had a whole generation of people on the run because yeah. he had the the balls to put something out there that nobody else had the balls to do and and that is um that's a pretty great thing to be able to say about your dad. That's amazing, isn't it? I mean, it's, it sounds a lot like you've come to terms with your famous surname. Um, I, I imagine it's not always been like that. I imagine sometimes you've struggled with it. I mean, I, I to a certain extent, live in my father's shadow as well because I, I now run his business that he's retired from. And, and I, I get that it's not always easy. I mean, were there times where you struggled? Well, look, man, you know, nothing's easy in this world or this mm. life, right? But everything yeah. that we go through leads us to where we are. And everything yep. that I've gone through, both good and bad, has led me to talking to you right now. Oh, wonderful. So, you know, I mean, that's about the best way I can think to answer that, you know? That's brilliant. So let's talk about what you're doing at the moment. We've had rumors flying around the internet about your work and what you've been up to recently. Uh, and everyone has, everyone that we've spoken to has been really excited to hear about your new project. Uh, so could you tell us... Uh, a little bit about Rise of the Living Dead. What is it? How far along are you with the development? When can we start getting excited about seeing it? Well, I hope you get excited now. Um, I am. Not already. I, <laughs> we are, uh... we are. I mean, more excited than I already am. <laughs> <laughs> this is um, this is one of those projects that, uh, you know, I've, I've been stewing it around in my head, and I didn't realize it, right? So it's, I'll try to give you guys the short version. But <laughs> in 2010, I had... Uh, lived a life of being asked, when are you going to make a zombie movie? When are you going to make a zombie movie? When are you going to make a zombie movie? Mm. And I always say, hey, that's my dad's thing. I'm not going to mess around with that. And um, finally, somebody just asked me the question in a different way. They said, well, if you were going to make a zombie movie, what movie would you make? Mm. And, you know, it just, you know, sometimes you look at something different or you hear something different and it mm. just resonates. And, and something, you know, it, just a different perspective can can provide a level of clarity that, was elusive up to that moment hmm. and um i realized that you know i'd spent a life uh privy to conversations with my dad and 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 fans and uh, you know, i had this crazy perspective on on night of the living dead that not a lot of people were lucky enough to have and and uh and i'd been working on you know even as a little kid oh man if i was you know in a zombie apocalypse i'd do this you know i mean that kind of stuff and so i started thinking and thinking and thinking and, and i went home that day and i started writing this script that i called origins um back in 2010 and i i wrote my vomit draft in just a couple of days and uh and then kind of 
sat on it for about a week before I started wheeling it in. And, um, you know, even back then, long before, you know, anything happened with my, my father or, or his you know, ultimate departure, um, I, this project came from a place of love, you know, for him. And, uh, mm-hmm. you, you know, I just, I, I, I've, I've done other interviews where I've talked about this and, and, and I've said, you know, it, it was, it was terrifying on a couple of levels after I wrote it because number one, here I am, you know, a, a kid about to, you know, show something he's proud of to his father. Yeah. And, you know, my mother had been dead for a while. And so, you know, as a child, you want that parental approval. And then you do. beyond that, here I am, a, a, a a diehard fan of my father and a zombie fan, and I'm about to show my my zombie script to George A. Romero. Yes. You know, so I was, just, <laughs> I was like freaking out on a couple of levels. Yeah, I can so imagine. I, that. I did. I did the only thing that I could do, which was stay completely true to myself. And I, told, I mentioned earlier that I dedicated my life to pursuing what I believe to be the essence of creativity and mm-hmm. and, and and my own inner creative. I believe it's different for everybody, but my life was centered around you know, honing my inner creative as much as possible. And so the only thing I could do at that point to overcome sort of those nerves was to stay true Mm. to that inner creative. And I wrote Rise, I wrote Origins originally, uh, as from a place of love for my dad and for his work and for, you know, beyond that, because that, you know, I started to think, well, that's selfish because there's, you know, how many other hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people out there that dedicate their lives to something and credit my father as being a, a, you know, an inspiration to that or a big bang in their life of creativity. And so then I realized that I, that I had a lot bigger picture that I needed to stay true to if I was going to do this right. And I started really doing it from a place of love for not only him and his work, but for for uh, all of us fans of his and yeah. for everybody who ever fell in love with his work. And And so what I ultimately landed on was a story that takes place over a six-year period prior to night and um and i love it and it is um it is it is the most uh most beautiful homage i think i could ever write for the man in my own opinion and 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 i don't mean that in an elevated opinion at all Mm. i just mean that as gently as possible and um so that's what it is and i think um you know, I, I think the best thing I can do is to just tell people to just stay tuned to the social media because I'm 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 extremely close to making some formal announcements, and um, I I'm, I just can't just yet. But I'm hoping that there will be some interesting stuff this month um, to put out there uh, that will give everybody a little bit more concrete idea of everything. But in the meantime, also there's a website up at romerosdeadverse.com that um, basically I've put. As much as I can put out there in the public eye about mm-hmm. the project is mm-hmm. all present on RomeroSDeadverse.com. We're developing a D&D style tabletop role playing game. Yeah, oh, I saw that. Um, yeah. We just finished the rule set for and we're working on the first campaigns and there's really exciting stuff going on with that. Um, so the I've got ta- some great. Sorry, oh, um, Cameron, uh, the, the tabletop game, is that going to sit alongside Rise? Is it going to be like, uh, you know, companion? Uh, yeah, it's, it's going to, it's, it's rooted, uh, mm-hmm. in the story and then it goes out and, and basically expands the sandbox if you will. So, sure. you know, there's, there are a few surprises that I've got in store for, for fans with this project. And one of them is the fact that, um, hopefully, uh, you know, people will realize that we're creating a little bit bigger sandbox for everybody to play in. Yeah. And, uh, as, as these announcements become more formalized, I'll be able to drill down into a little bit more of what that means. But um, I'm, I'm trying to make a bigger sandbox and, and, and give people a really great place to come and play. That sounds so, amazing. Very much a case of watch this space and hopefully soon we'll find out a little bit more information. Exactly. And then there's information up there. I've got some great VR stuff going on with it. I've got um, you know some great episodic stuff and some graphic novel things. And there's, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's really becoming, it's taken on a life of its own over the years. And, um, uh, you know, the, the biggest sadness for me about it is that uh, I didn't get it done before before he departed. And, um, um, yeah. you know, but on the other hand, I, I, if I have to look for an upshot on that somehow, I, I have to assume that whatever plane he's on, at least he gets a full panoramic view of the entire thing as opposed to me just going over and saying, hey, check out my movie. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> and it, and it, it seems like, you know, talking to you that it's grown beyond what Cameron was originally trying to do with Origin, but rather 
you know, trying to encompass what all the fans want. And like you said, create a new sandbox for the, for the fans to literally, you know, to, to exist in, which, you know, is, is a massive, massive homage to your father. And, you know, I, I'm sure he'd be exceptionally proud. It sounds really, really exciting. Um, it does. Thank you. Uh, last year we did um, we did a convention in in, in Manchester where uh, Bex lives and um, it was mm-hmm. called called Weekend of the Dead um, and it's a sort yeah. of it, it, it it's a great show um, like it's run by a guy called Marcus who's, who's been on the podcast a few times and he invites all, all the guys over you know the people from the movies and stuff and Tom Savini was there and you know quite a lot of other people there but the, but the, the the nice thing about those type of shows is that it it feels like a big family the the fans the actors the, you know the artists involved everybody feels so close and it's the only convention mm-hmm. i've ever been to where the guest stars are mingling with the attendees and, and mingling yeah. with us um and we was you know there was no separation between tables or you know it, you know the, them and us it was all together which we, i've never we been a to a star struck weren't we we was and i've never been to a show like that so uh, my my question to you is how does that feel for you that you know that the fans on the other side of the planet are, are queuing up to get into the to a show like that um and and secondly w- would you ever consider in the future you know once rise gets going of coming over and doing conventions in the uk yourself yeah i would as a matter of fact i would love to come over and do some of that stuff and uh you know how does it make me feel i think it's a beautiful thing you mm. know i mean what my dad and those guys did back then um you know, it was unprecedented you know there's only a handful of small groups of people in the history of the entertainment industry that can be pointed to and said these guys did that these guys did this these guys redefined that or these guys defined this or you know and 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 they were one of those groups and and you know i i'd be lying if i said that i wasn't you know extremely proud of of that fact um so you know i i think it's a great thing it's a beautiful thing i think that that's a testimony for just how deep you know what my father's work how, how deep it went, you know, yeah. I mean, it, 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 it inspired a generation to yeah. go out and, and learn how to sculpt a zombie bite or, uh, you know, I mean, it inspired so many people it, it, from effects artists to photographers, to cinematographers, to directors and filmmakers and, and musicians and artists and mm. writers. And I say writers. And I mean, you know, like, <laughs> lots of writers. It, There's so many of us. <laughs> the, um, you know, I mean, it runs deep. Mm. The, 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 the work that they did touched millions of people. And and to, to see that I've never heard a story about anybody at these conventions or anything being an asshole to a fan or anything like that. And yeah. that's part of it. You know, I mean, that's part of it. You yeah. know, I mean, it's terrible that night ended up in the public domain, but. You know, it's also kind of beautiful that it created this open source community. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> if definitely. that makes any sense yeah agree yeah, you know? yeah, and, and, it, and that, that's how it feels it feels like a community and that that's a you know an incredible thing it's a great legacy to leave all around the world this community of fans and artists and everybody who's involved it, you know it's something that um, everybody should be very proud of um thank you yeah. cameron for coming on to our podcast our little podcast on the other side of the world um no, it's an honor thank you for asking it's been great it's, it's been amazing yeah. i mean it, it's it's made us up it really has this this is you know to get get to talk to you and find out about the future of Romero movies is you know it, 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 as fans this is really you know a big moment for us so thank you very much and we'd love to see you at Weekend of the Dead one year we would that would be brilliant I would love to come I would love to come excellent so. right we need to get on Marcus yes yeah, so I'll, 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 I'll get him on next week and ask him <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good, guys. Well, thank you so much for your time today, and it's been really nice talking to you guys. Thank you, Before Kevin. You, we let you escape, we have to bring you a question from probably oh, okay. Okay. The, the biggest fan that we have on the group, uh, Mark Nye, who did quite a lot of research for us, bless him. He, um, he's really helped us with this episode because it was quite in-depth that we had to go. So he wanted to ask you, um, so your father is often cited as the godfather of the zombie genre. If there was any other monster you wish you could have created, what is it and why? Yeah, I actually saw that. I like Mark. He's got some interesting stuff I see all around social media. He's a good guy, it seems like. And, uh, you know, I, I saw him put that question up there. I don't really 
know that I haven't. Somebody, okay, this goes to a conversation I had earlier today. <laughs> Somebody said to me, hey, I think I want to put a twist in this thing I'm writing hmm. and have a werewolf show up. Hmm. And, okay. uh, and he said to me, he said, uh, would you be interested in helping me write it? And I said, absolutely not. He said, why? And I said, because there's certain things out there that I don't want to touch. Um, you know, I, it's this kind of the same reason that it took me so long to come around to, to writing Rise. You know, I didn't want to make a zombie movie, but it wasn't until somebody asked me what kind of zombie movie would you make hmm. that it all came out. Right. So in terms of any monster that I wish I could have created, I mean, God, I don't think I would want that responsibility. No, that's fair <laughs> enough. Stick with what you know. I think it, I mean, I, <laughs> you know? I think when it comes to monsters, it's kind of like all, all monsters are kind of the, the same background, aren't they? They're, they're, yeah. the, they're the fear that we have, you know, somewhere hidden in our childhood or in our lives or something like that. So, so monsters are monsters, really. It's the story, isn't it, that's going to be the thing that makes the difference, whether it's a story worth telling or not worth telling. Well, I think you, you you struck gold when you said the word fear. I mean, mm. that's what it really is. That's mm. what that's what made zombies so effective. That's what makes horror movies effective is is when you can figure out how to trigger on and play on the fears of your audience. Mm. That's when you've created the ultimate monster. And yeah. it doesn't matter what form that monster comes in. Exactly. As long as you can address as long as you can address fear and bring mm. it out to mm. the surface in everybody who watches and everybody who watches your movie watches it differently yeah so you know <laughs> yeah if you can land on these universal things mm. which i think is what made what my dad did so successful mm. is he landed on the ability to 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 strike a universal nerve yeah and um i think that that if i could create any monster it would be something that did just that Thank you very much for answering that question for mark who will yeah. be yeah. chuffed a bit um and thank it you will. for coming on the podcast once again yeah, absolutely. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. Or Have night, good... I guess. Hey. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Night. Take care. Thank you so much. Bye. Brain dead. <laughs> oh. Brains. <laughs> Well, that, that's not a zombie, that's Bex. And that's the end of um, this episode, our special episode, um, which was wonderful. Did you enjoy Bex? I did. I really, I really, really enjoyed it. And I was so, so nervous. But it was dead nice, when he Cameron. He just kind of... Yeah. It was like, my friends call me Cameron, so you can call me Cameron. And yeah, I was that, like, oh my God. He was very... I'm very, George Cameron Romero's friend. He was a very charming guy. Um, he was. He I, was lovely. I, do you know what? If there's... You know, we speak to lots of authors and we speak to people who work in films and stuff like we that. We do. And, and, and you always wish them well. And you always say, look, I hope this project goes really well for you. But I've never wanted a project to go super well as much as this uh, thing. Oh, yeah. You know? Oh, I can't wait for it. I'm so excited. I, you, not just because I'm a fan of the, the, the genre. Not just because, I, 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 you know, we spoke to Cameron. But, I mean, I feel like this is a whole community thing. I feel like there's a group of people out there who really want this to do well. And, that you know, yeah. I, and I think they deserve it. I think they deserve Definitely. this to do well. Um, now... I think he, he, you know, he hit the nail on the head that it's hard to resonate with this generation because of our, you know, the internet culture and stuff. Uh, you know, if you mm -hmm. make something that's, uh, you know, has episodes, every episode is, you know, poured over for hours and analysed and poured over and everybody's a director, everybody's a writer, everybody knows about editing and lighting and, you know, everybody's an expert, aren't they, in this day and age? So it's, it's going to be really tough because it's got the Romero label. So whatever he puts out there, you know, people are going to be very critical of. Um, Definitely. I, mean, so, I think it's just going to be great. I, I, yeah, I, I, do, I, I, I agree. I, I imagine I, it's going to be brilliant. It's going to be super tough for him, but I wish him the very best. I hope it goes fantastically well for him. Um, and it was, you know, it was really nice just chatting to the guy, somebody who's been in the yeah. industry, been in, you know, the, like I said, a creative industry his whole life. Um, I, you know, I have a lot of admiration for him, um, you know, to to be such a, a charming guy um, and have so many creative things going on at once, so many balls up in the air. I don't know how he juggles. You know, you know how many things I have. You don't know how he juggles balls. I don't know how he juggles balls. You know, I have a lot of projects on the go, don't I? I've always got lots of projects. Like He you sounded do. like he had 10 times more than me. It's like he's just juggling projects up in the air. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, how can't, I can't barely cope with doing this every week, mate. <laughs> every two weeks. We have, we have to do it every two weeks now because I'm that busy. <laughs> yeah, well, it was lovely, lovely to have him on. Um, so, what have we got to tell our listeners about before we say goodbye? What, what, um, what should we? Tell well, them? everything that um, Cameron Romero is doing 
in regards to Rise of the of the Living Dead, we're going to put all the Facebook links and the Facebook group mm. uh, and his website and everything on the the blog, so yep. you can go and check it out yourself. Yeah, and, and that's I'll what we need make to say sure about that. that in the description there's the links. I'll make sure yeah. that we post them on our Facebook page, and I'll make sure that every time he posts something on social media, we share it because I think we it's will. really important. And I think you guys should, you know, as as listeners of this podcast, you're part of this, so you yeah, should do that. Yeah, we need to be too. supportive. Yeah. Um, what else have we got going on? So the the, the Facebook group has been really busy. Um, yeah. I know tonight, tonight's Friday when we're recording this. It's going to go on Monday. But on Friday, um, Joe has started a thread about baby pictures. Um, and I know right now everybody's sharing their baby pictures and child pictures and stuff like that. And that's an hilarious thread. So if you're not part of our Facebook group, you should go uh, join our Facebook group, Good Morning Zon Park, and you can see us all looking like babies. Um, yeah. Yeah, which is fun. Except for me because I don't have any baby pictures because I'm pretty sure I was adopted <laughs> oh I'm sure they can find some somewhere maybe they still have them at the circus <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which circus uh. Um, what else do we need to tell our listeners about what's going on we've the got book. um we've Book's got the new book coming out soon which is the queuing dead um which is our riff on the walking dead which is like a comedy book which you uh, which has got lots of hardcore zombie books stories in it so that's that's coming out soon we've got um we've still got the the treasure chest zombie anthology still available to buy that's um obviously for charity so feel free to go buy that um and obviously you can support us on patreon don't forget to support us on Patreon. That pays for the hosting. And um, we deliberately didn't have a advert this week, and I did that on purpose um, because Cameron was coming on. Um, this episode is probably going to get more listeners than every other episode we're going to do this season. So I didn't want to monetize that. I felt um, that obviously Cameron was doing his favour, um, and I didn't want to make any money from that. So I didn't put an. Advert and also, on. we were advertising him. Yes. Yes. Which is something we wanted to do. Exactly. And I didn't want uh, to be, you know, to, to try and sort of use our podcast to promote us. This podcast was to promote uh, Rise of the Living Dead. So I, I, I hope we achieved that. Um, I think we did. Is there anything else we want to say? No, I think we're done boring people with the clerical ending. I know. We should really do make these admin e- endings tighter, shouldn't we? We should. Yeah, a little bit more fun. You know when they do the terms and conditions at the end of an advert on the radio? Where they go, it's all really fast. We should do that. Yeah, that's what we need to do. That's what we need to do. Well, I'll just speed this up. In post-production, I'll just speed the end bit up so they, they haven't got to fucking listen. They'll be well pleased. Yeah. We'll just, you know, we'll just warn them to press stop as soon as the interview's done. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, well, I'll put a disclaimer up. Right, thank you very yeah, much disclaimer. for... Um, thank thank you, you very to, much for listening. Yeah, thank you for listening. Thank you to Rebecca. Um, thank you to Mark. Why is it we're calling me Rebecca tonight? I, 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 you're at that age now, Bex. You're, I told you earlier that um, you're now... <laughs> that's it, I've hit 30, I get my full name. You get your grandma socks and your full name. <laughs> um... So, Grandma Socks, uh, I need to say thank you to you because you're our wonderful co-host. Um, so thank you very much. Um, oh, you're not a co-host. Oh, no, I, forget, I said it. It's all right. I don't mind. <laughs> but, and thank you to you for organising and getting in touch with fucking George Cameron Romero, for God's sake. Yeah, I've, I've got to thank Mark Nye as well. Um, I, as much as I hate to say it. Um, he did to help us out with this episode. Um, he did. He asked about the question and stuff. So um, thanks, Mark. Appreciate that, mate. Um, and thank you to everyone for listening. Bye-bye. 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 <laughs>